Welcome to Testimony Time. I'm Doug Harris and my guest today is Laura, Laura Maxwell. Hi, Hi Laura. Thank you for coming. I think folks will realise when they hear your accent, you've come quite a long way today. <laughs> Appreciate you coming and, uh, and, and being with us. And, and Laura, you're obviously going to share your story with us as, as, as we go through. But you were brought up. In, 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 in a spiritualist home, your, your, your mother was a spiritualist. Do you, do you have any idea of why she got into it, first of all? Certainly, yeah. My mother had psychic experiences really since she was a child and through her teens and adult life. But she tended to ignore it. She wasn't too interested then. Obviously, she met my dad and, and they had me. So it wasn't till in later years she decided to pursue it and develop it further. Um, really when I was about a preteen, um, I also had psychic experiences as a child too and was very interested in it as well. So was this something that just happened to you guys or, 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 or was it something you were seeking or something that was there in, 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 in your lives? It was something that was there. Um, we didn't find out until later that it had ran in the family. Um, there was and my mother's side cousins that that were involved in spiritualism in fact an uncle was a head of a spiritualist church in Ayrshire so it certainly did it missed a few generations but it certainly was in the bloodline yeah yeah, yeah. and so what what was growing up like in in in, in that atmosphere i mean was it a, a normal childhood or, or or were all sorts of things happening in the home i mean what was it like for you it was a normal childhood most of the time. Um, really, my dad wasn't interested at all in it, so my mother and I didn't really go into it too deeply. Um, eventually, they divorced, and really then, I suppose, she, she just plunged into it in a deeper way. But certainly, as a child, um, there were several psychic experiences, dreams, that kind of a thing that my mother and I had. Um, so throughout my childhood, there were a few, but it didn't develop until later right. childhood I, I mean I think some kids if, if, th if they have these psychic experiences and things happening to them would be very fearful I mean was fear something that you felt as a child or because your mother was into it it was acceptable and, and therefore no problem to you as a child I wasn't scared because there weren't too many scary things happening yet. That wasn't until much later as a child. It was more, you know, I was fascinated with the supernatural. I loved ghost stories, um, watching supernatural programs on the TV, um, ESP, these kind of things. Um, it wasn't until later on that the frightening stuff began to happen. Mm -hmm. yep. when, when the frightening stuff began started, was there that within you that wanted to run away or were you by that time so aware that hey there's something here that I, i'm going to go through whatever happens by that point we were both really well and truly involved um as a preteen, my mother had already joined a, a spiritualist church and i joined it too and we went every week a couple of times a week so by then we were already involved in um, psychic development classes, um, mediumship training, seances, that kind of thing. We were already involved in um, seeking mediums for messages from dead relatives um, and really developing in it. We were interested in astral projection, astrology, meditation, yoga. You know, we were becoming deeply involved. So when the odd frightening thing happened, I guess we thought, well, it's just a hazard of the job. You're dealing with spirits. You're bound to get a few negative spirits. We didn't really question too deeply straight away. Right. So that, that's the way you looked at it, was it? That this was a negative spirit rather than a positive spirit that, that, that you would normally um, sort of meet with. Yeah, sometimes that would happen, but, but mostly um, we had communication with spirit guides. 
Um, Can you explain a little bit? I, I mean, I think a lot of people have heard this phrase, spirit guides, but probably are not too sure what what they are. Can, can you explain a little bit about that and how that manifested itself to you? Yes. Uh, spirit guides tended to be, the way it would be described would be perhaps um, an Indian chief or some spirit that had just evolved high up in the spirit world that had come, had chosen us and had come to be our guide, give us advice, um, develop our psychic abilities, really be with us all of the time. Uh, they would also help channel um, apparent dead relatives. That's what they explained it to us, um, whether it was our great gran, our sister, great uncle, whoever, um, channel them through and communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So when, when you brought a message from a dead relative, was it your spirit guide that was telling you that, or did you actually hear the voice of the dead relative? Um, I didn't do that personally. My mother right. did that. Um, but, yes, yeah, sometimes it would be the spirit guides giving her the information. Other times it would be the relatives themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I was more encouraged to take up the psychic art, which was... Um, I didn't get too involved in it, though. I started it and became quite frightening, so I right. didn't pursue it. But that was where I was encouraged to let a spirit guide take over my hand. Oh, automatic writing. Like automatic writing, yes. but it was art. Draw, oh, art. Oh, right. draw the psychic art, draw the picture, the portrait of the spirit guide or even the dead relatives. So, of course, if I was to give that portrait to a relative, they would think, oh, yeah, that's, that's my dead granny. That just looks like her. And mm -hmm. it would make them think that this, the grandmother had come through to them. Mm -hmm. As I say, I started doing that, and I started doing um, Curlian photography, which is photographing spirits with infrared film. Um, but ectoplasm would start to form, and really I, I got quite afraid of that, mm -hmm. and um, I just didn't want to pursue it. I thought I would go back to it in a few years, but um, I didn't want to pursue yeah. it any further at that stage. So you were really allowing these spirits, as of yet you hadn't really defined what they were, but yeah. you were allowing these spirits just to take over and, and, and you just let your mind go, your hand go and, and just draw and it would be very much automatic what would happen with it? Yes, my, m my mother did it was much more involved than I was. I was a pre-teen, so I was more involved in going out with friends and that kind of mm -hmm. thing, but she delved right into it. She um, would allow spirit guides to take over her hand and she would write screeds and screeds and pages and pages of so-called sacred writings. Mm -hmm. She even um, did an open university course, didn't study for it, and yet the spirit guides took over and wrote all the answers and that kind of thing. You know, she just had to go into trance and they would just take over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty scary stuff. Um, <laughs> Did you ever stop at that point to think who these spirits were? I mean, did it ever cross your mind that you could be into something demonic or something evil at, at that point in your life? No, at, at that point, I didn't think that. Um, <clears throat> in fact, a good friend at the time, um, she was a Catholic girl, and she told me the, the Bible said you shouldn't do that. And, uh, and I asked her, well, why? But she didn't really know why. She just said, you shouldn't do it. But the spiritualists just assumed, well, Christians are kind of narrow-minded. The Bible, it, you know, they didn't really believe in it. And some Christian spiritualists even said, well, they, they sometimes spoke to Jesus, that he was just a psychic, he was just a medium, and they sometimes channeled through Jesus. And, you know, it was all kind of mixed up. So. At that point, I thought the spirit guides were truly who they claimed to be and the dead relatives were truly who they claimed to be. Yeah. As I say, if um, a poltergeist activity did occur, spiritualists would explain that in the sense of, well, sometimes you do get a mischievous spirit that manages to get through and right. that's a bit of a hazard of the job, but normally your, your spirit guides, you can trust them, they protect you, that kind of thing. Uh, so anybody watching that 
is going through anything like the experiences that you and your, your mother went through um, could really feel that these things are okay. Yes, sometimes things go wrong mm -hmm. because they're saying that's explained away. But as you say, well, Jesus was a psychic and I talked to Jesus anyway. And so they, at that, that point, as you did, would see nothing wrong, nothing to be wrong with it. It's good, it's helpful, it's nice. And that's how you saw it. Absolutely. It? I mean, most mediums and spiritualists and psychics that we knew were lovely, lovely people, genuine people, kind people. I think that's why a lot of them were attracted to that, because they felt they could help others. They could bring comfort to people, guidance, direction, you know, predictions about the future, prophecies. They could help people. Yeah. So it seemed a lovely religion to be in. It seemed, you know, helpful and everything like that. Yeah. 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 What other things were commonplace? Uh, I mean, you know, what other things were happening in, in your life in the psychic realm at, at, at that sort of time? Well, there would be psychic premonitions and dreams, um, even about what would happen on the news next week, that kind of thing that would all be very accurate and, and, and come true. Um, there would be messages for people about their deceased relatives where you wouldn't think it was fake or a charlatan was involved because the information would be so accurate. Names, dates, places, mm -hmm. descriptions of the deceased person, their personality, phrases they might use a lot. You know, you wouldn't think it was fake at all. Um, studying astral projection, reincarnation, just the whole host of New Age activities um, that, that surround that whole area, really. Mm -hmm. um, transfiguration sessions, we went to those. What would be transfiguration sessions? Yeah. Um, the medium, tended to be a medium a bit more advanced, um, would take the platform and go into trance, whereby they basically w entered into a different level of consciousness. They would say, and allow uh, spirit guides and dead spirits to take over their body to such an extent, ectoplasm would form all round about them which was like a kind of thick mist yeah. that could yeah. be touched, it was tangible. Their faces and their body uh, kind of a changed where their face would s subside and um, the dead spirit's face and features would, would come over. The, the, the change, their shoulders would change, you know, the whole shape would change, their voice would change and it would be just like your Uncle Bob who's been dead 10 years yes. and you, you would go, oh, that's my Uncle Bob and he would speak, give you a message, mm. that kind of thing. Mm. To be honest, that scared me. I, I only went to a few of those, but my mother certainly went to, to more right. because she was developing towards becoming a medium. Right. And, and as you said there, that there were so many things that were real. I, I mean, I, I, one of the things that media often do, and I've been involved in the past, is, is that when you get somebody you know, that's involved in, in the psychic realm, they want to put the skeptic up against them and the skeptics said, oh, that can't be true. They say, yeah. But you see, as you're saying, there were things there that were so real to you that that you knew there had to be some power with it. Mm -hmm. You hadn't defined yeah. it as yet, yeah. but you knew there had to be something. And, and, and there were things that were so real that w would keep you in there. And, and of course, that would be true for people still today, isn't it? Yeah. They, they would have had real experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of skeptics and journalists would go to spiritualist meetings and after they'd sat through it and, and had a message from one of their dead relatives, they would 